be making a basic drawstring bag. This is a really simple bag and it's great for storing larger items. My students love to use this bag to hold their PE clothes. It's a really good size and closes with a single drawstring. This bag measures approximately 13 and a half by 15 and a half inches when finished. To make this project, you're gonna want a half a yard of cotton fabric. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when you get your fabric is trim off the selvage. The selvage is this pre-finished edge. It prevents fraying when the fabric is on the bolt in the store. A lot of times your selvage will have words or a different texture, so you can kind of see here on this one, on one side it has the words, but then on the other side you can kind of see the slight discoloration as you get towards the end, and it has a very different texture than the rest of the fabric. So before you begin sewing, you're gonna to want to trim off your selvage from both ends. What I usually like to do is fold the fabric so that the edges of the selvage line up, and then trim through both layers at once. Once you have the selvage trimmed off, you're ready to start. To work on this project, you're going to want a large size ruler, marking chalk or fabric marking tool. You're also going to need an iron. And it's also helpful if you have an ironing tool to help protect your fingers. I like to use a silicone spatula. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut an 18 by 34 inch rectangle and then fold it in half. This will create a rectangle that's approximately 17 by 18 inches. Find the folded edge. So right here along this edge is my fold. On the other side, I'm gonna draw myself some lines, which will help me make strips of fabric for my drawstring. I'm gonna lay my ruler on the far side. This is the side that is not folded. It's opposite from the fold. And I'm going to mark a two inch strip. My ruler happens to be exactly two inches wide. If your ruler is wider than that, just overlap by two inches and mark a line. Next, you're gonna make a second line two inches away from that. So this is a total of four inches away from the edge. And draw a line again. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and along the first line, I'm gonna cut through both layers of fabric. Make sure it's all lined up. This gives me two two inch strips. On my next line, I'm gonna cut again, but this time, I'm only going to cut through a single layer of fabric. So I'm not going to cut through the bottom. I'm only going to cut through the top layer. You should now have one large rectangle that's approximately 18 by 28 inches. And you should have three two inch strips. The next thing I'm going to do is make some guide marks that will help me when I do my drawstring channel later. First, identify the top of the fabric. If you had something like words or pictures of characters, you wanna make sure they were facing the right direction. So on my fabric, this is the top. Along the top edge, this is one of your long edges, one that's about 28 inches long, we're gonna draw some guide marks because that's where our drawstring channel will go. 
So let's zoom in just a little bit closer so you can see. Along this top edge, all the way across, I'm going to draw a line that's one inch away from the edge. So I'm going to overlap my ruler over top of the fabric one inch and draw a line. If you don't have marking chalk, a regular pencil works just fine. Then I'm going to make another line that's two and a half inches below this one. So a total of three and a half inches from the edge. Since my ruler is not that wide, to make this line what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure three and a half inches from the edge. One, two, three and a half right there. And I'm going to make another mark a ways away. Again, three and a half inches from the edge. And then I'm going to connect my two marks. Draw your lines all the way across. I have my lines drawn all the way across the top edge. Drawing with a pencil is actually really nice. I use my chalk because it shows up better on camera. With a pencil you can be a lot more exact, however it doesn't always come off quite so easy. So if you're worried about it being visible, a different kind of marking tool might be better. An airy race marker is really great if you're going to make the project all in one sitting. So next, take your rectangle and fold it so that the right sides are together. Notice that my lines are still at the top here. Next, starting at this second line right here, I'm going to sew the sides and bottom of my bag together. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to sew down to my corner. I'm going to stop a half an inch away from the edge, turn, and keep sewing. So first I'm going to use a few pins to secure this together. Next, I'm going to make myself a mark so I know where to turn at the bottom. At the bottom corner, I'm going to draw myself a mark a half an inch from the bottom. I'm using an air erase marker for this because I'm going to sew it right now. So this will tell me where I need to stop and turn. So again, start sewing three and a half inches from the top edge. This is right at your second line. Sew down to the bottom a half an inch away from the end, turn, and keep sewing. We're going to sew with a half an inch seam allowance and we're going to use a stitch length of 2.5. My sewing machine is set to stitch length 2.5. I also have it set to the default needle position on my machine that's stitch 00. zero. You want to make sure that, you can, that your needle aligns up with your measurements on your needle plate so that you can get an exact seam allowance. I'm going to be using a half an inch seam allowance, which is really close to the edge of my foot here. I'm going to put my needle down right on my second line. I'll remove the pin. And I'm going to go forward just a few stitches. And now I'll go back a few stitches. And I'll sew my seam. I'm going to slow down as I approach the corner and I'm going to stop so that my needle ends on this line. And I'm going to use my purple thing to help me guide my fabric so I don't accidentally sew my finger. One more stitch and I'm going to lift up my foot, turn my fabric, and keep sewing. 
Make sure that your needle is down when you do that. So all the way to the end and back stitch so you get a good knot. Now that we've stitched on the side and bottom of our drawstring bag, we're ready to press. The first thing you want to do is to make a little cut in the seam allowance. Right here after my second line is where my stitches start. I'm going to go about a half an inch below that and make a little cut in the seam allowance. I don't want it to be too big, probably about 3 eighths of an inch long. I don't want to actually cut my stitches, but I just want to cut, make a little cut right here. So there's my line and the start of my stitches. I'm going to go down a half an inch and make a little cut. I'm going to do this because it will allow me to open the seam just on the top section. So you're going to want to go to your ironing board and in this top section right here, you're going to want to fold over one edge, a half an inch. This will make it so it lines up about with your stitches and you're going to press that flat. Then flip it over and do the same thing on the other top edge so that the two line up. So this is your side seam and now at the top edge where your casing's going to be, you have two folds. If you open up your bag and look at that side seam, you can see how it gives you a nice finished edge. So next we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch these folds in place. We're not going to stitch on the back, just sewing this fold in place. So from the top edge down to just past our line, we're going to stitch it in place with about a quarter inch to three eighths inch seam allowance. So we're going to stay close to this edge here to hold it in place. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to move the other side of fabric out of the way and I'm just going to sew this edge with a seam allowance that's just a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. Don't forget to back stitch. Place your drawstring bag on your ironing board. And the first thing we're going to do is fold down the raw edge to touch our first line. This will give you a fold that's a half an inch wide. So line it up with the line you drew and press it flat. You're going to do that all the way around. Once you have the top fold pressed, you're going to keep that fold in place and you're going to fold it down to touch your second line and press. Again, do this all the way around. We now have a nice pressed casing along the top of our bag. The next thing we're going to do is sew this casing in place. We're going to sew all the way around the top edge. So we're going to start at one end, go all the way around, and stop at the other. We're going to be sewing really close to this fold, about an eighth of an inch away. So as we do our stitches, we're going to line up our seam allowance with this edge 
and we're gonna sew an eighth of an inch away from this fold. So just a little bit to this side. If this is a feature of your machine, you can remove the compartment on the front to give yourself more space. On my machine, one eighth of an inch on this side is lining it up with about the center of this metal bar right here. So I'm gonna line up my fold with that tip right there. Needle down. Don't forget to back stitch. And you may have to adjust your fabric as you go, so just remember to keep the layers that you're not sewing out of the way. Slow down as you get to the end and back stitch. You can give your channel another quick press to set the stitches. Next we're going to be finishing our seams. Our raw edges are all hidden in our casing which is really nice. But if you look at the other seams of the bag, you may notice that there are a lot of strings and threads. This is where the fabric starts to unravel. So in our seam allowance, we're going to finish our seam. You can see my skill building video linked below for more information on finishing seams. There are lots of different ways you can do so. You can trim the seam allowance with pinking shears. You can use an overcast stitch, or what I'm going to do today is use a zigzag stitch. So in my seam allowance, from where my little cut mark was, down to the corner and over, we're going to sew with a zigzag stitch. So I'm just going to do a row of zigzag stitches in my seam allowance. It won't touch my stitches and it won't touch the edge, it will just be in the center. And then I'll turn and do the bottom as well. My sewing machine is now set to the zigzag stitch. I have it set to a stitch length of 2.5 and a stitch width of 4.0. And I'm stitching through both the layers. And I'm just going to center it in my seam allowance. Don't forget to back stitch. If your fabric starts to get sucked under, like mine did, you can use your purple thing to help you. I've finished sewing my zigzag in the seam allowance. So the next thing I'm going to do is trim it off. I'm going to cut along the edge and trim off the excess fabric. I'm going to cut close to my zigzag stitches, but I don't want to actually cut them. Do the same on the bottom edge. You can see that I've trimmed closer to my stitches. The back portion of my project is finished, and now I'm ready to work on the drawstring. To make the drawstring, the first thing you need to do is connect your strips. So take two of your two inch strips. Lay one of them right side up. Lay the other right side down on top of it at the corner so that the fabric is perpendicular. We're going to stitch across the corner at an angle. So you can kind of imagine the little square where they overlap. We're going to sew diagonally, corner to corner, in that square. We want to be pretty exact, so I'm using an air erase marker because it's precise. 
The way I remember which way to do my diagonal is after you've drawn it, you should end up with a little triangle off at the corner. If you don't have a triangle off at the corner, if you did it this way, then you know it's going the wrong direction. I'm gonna pin this in place and stitch exactly on my line. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, on the other end of my strip. I'm gonna lay it right side up. I'm gonna grab my third piece and I'm gonna place it at the other end. I'm gonna draw a line diagonal on the overlapping square as exact as I can. Notice I have a triangle hanging off and I'm gonna sew exactly on the line. Make sure to return to your straight stitch. Trim off your threads and then trim your seam allowance to be a quarter of an inch. You can use a ruler or a gauge to help mark your quarter of an inch. So measure just a quarter inch from your stitches. You can also use your purple thing as a guide. Remember this end is a quarter inch wide. You don't wanna do this too small because then it could fall apart. But just a quarter inch away, trim off your seam allowance on each corner. When you lay it flat, you'll now have one long strip. And we sew it together this way to reduce the bulk so that we don't end up with a spot that has lots and lots of layers. Turn your strip to the wrong side and press open the seam allowance. Do this on both seams. Then take your strip and along the short end, fold it under about a half an inch and press. Do the same on the other end. Then fold your strip in half lengthwise, skinny like a hot dog. The wrong sides of the fabric should be touching and you'll be looking at the pretty side. Take care not to burn your fingers. Both the iron and the steam are really hot, so if you need to, you can use a tool to help protect your fingers. Silicone spatulas work great. Of course, after you use them for crafting, you probably don't want to use them in the kitchen. Open up your fold and you can see where you pressed. Use that line as a guide and fold the other edges to the center. You don't want to go over your center line. You just want to get as close as you can without going over and press all the way down. This may take some time, but it will be really helpful if you do this carefully. Once you've pressed all the way down on your strip, do the same thing on the other edge. Again, fold it towards the center, but not over. You want to get as close to you as you can to that middle section. And continue pressing all the way down. Then take your strip and fold it in half one more time. Do this as carefully as you can. This will create a narrow drawstring that's only a half an inch wide. Continue all the way to the end. Now that my drawstring is all nice and pressed, I'm ready to sew. I'm gonna sew the two folds together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So all the way down the open edge 
I'm going to sew that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to close my drawstring. You do want to go slow and you want to be exact to make sure that you sew through all the layers. On my sewing machine, the eighth of an inch guide mark on this side is the very first groove right in the center of the foot. Give your drawstring one last press. This will help to set your stitches and help the drawstring to lay flat. Trim off any threads remaining on your drawstring or on your bag. Next, take a large safety pin and poke it through the end of the drawstring. And set it aside for a moment. Take your drawstring bag and turn it right side out. You should have two openings at the seam. In one of the openings, slide the safety pin through the channel. Bunch the fabric on the safety pin. Hold the safety pin with your left hand and gently pull the fabric to the right. Hold the safety pin with your right hand. Bunch the fabric. Hold the safety pin with your left hand. Let go with your right and slide the fabric. Keep doing this until the drawstring is all the way in the channel. If you can, try not to let your drawstring get twisted. To make sure it doesn't get twisted, it can help to thread it through in smaller increments. Once you have both ends, take off your safety pin. Pull the tie through until the ends are even. When you have both ends together, hold them together. Make a loop and pull it through.